financial instruments we tend to get worried a bit when we look at financial instruments it is not just my comment it, it, if you look at the uh, in the professional institutes if, if you look at the examiner comments they have also said that students tend to get worried a bit when they look at a question on financial instruments so friends but the fact of the matter is it is one of the simplest of the concepts i will go ahead if anyone has any query please do interrupt me and ask me then and then as always don't have to wait till i stop i take a pause every 20 minutes or half an hour you are free to ask me so friends look at the standard through examples i have also kept quite a few examples in my ppt and also i am going to solve if you as always not every single question it's not possible we will need five five hours for every unit if we keep on solving every question but a few questions to help the to drive home the concepts i will go back to my excel file and i will solve and show so friends financial instrument broadly consists of two to three aspects as they have given in this definition as part of financial instruments we are going to discuss about financial assets number 1 financial liability number 2 and equity instruments number 3 and there are three ifrs standards that we are going to discuss in the financial instruments chapter i ias 32 ifrs 7 and i have for us nine very important standards out of the 34 35 approximately again a few numbers here and there roughly i'm telling right for you to get a feel of how many standards we have roughly about 33 35 i have for standards that are in scope in the sbr paper these three are very core standards and friends always you have to know those bucketing of standards like which are those three four standards to be read together that is how you have to go through three four standards together three four standards together like that in about 9 to 10 different sets you can group all your 33 35 standards ifr standards financial asset our cash and bank balances that we all talk about are nothing but a prime example for financial asset or equity instrument of another entity our company our car company has invested in equity shares of another company what do you call that again it is another example of financial asset a few more concepts are there i tell my friends my students not to keep on reading too much of a theory once you go through the whole subject whole standard whole topic along with illustrations and then come back and see you will understand at the beginning itself for half an hour if you try to spend time on the definition of a financial asset we will not understand so let us move ahead i have also not wasted at my time and your time i have not highlighted every single word don't have to spend time go ahead and you will automatically understand okay so other examples if i have to give you trade receivables are also an example for financial asset financial liability a mirror image financial asset and financial liability are often referred to in the standard international by the standard authors by the standard educators as mirror images of each other not not we don't say opposite i may in the course of a conversation say opposite but the real fact of the matter is mirror image so there is a bit of a difference right a mirror image if i'm holding a cup of tea in my hand and if i'm standing before a mirror what do you see my friends you see the uh, you you see as if the uh, t is is on my left hand right you you don't see like it, it is in my right hand so that is why there is a subtle difference between a real opposite versus a mirror image contractual obligation to deliver cash 
Give an example. Think of an example. Prayed payables. And the most important example that I always give for financial liability is trade payables or a loan instrument or a, or debentures that our company has raised. We issued a piece of paper known as debentures. We issued a piece of paper known as loan as a loan note. We issued a piece of paper known as a bond and we have obtained some 100 crore worth of money. It is a liability. It is a financial liability. We as professionals, as students of SBR, we have to say financial liability, not just like a liability. Okay. So, the most common examples of financial liabilities I have named just now. Classification, the standard, uh, the way of discussing is always they start off with financial liability. Even from a conservatism, that particular concept that we all, all have learned, first of all, the organization tries to safeguard itself from a liability perspective, right? So in the subject also, they will teach us about financial liability. Then slowly we will go to financial asset. And believe me, friends, once you understand financial liabilities thoroughly, it is a cakewalk to understand financial assets. Exact opposite. Financial assets are exact opposite to financial liabilities. We don't have to spend time much on financial assets. So let us focus a bit on financial liabilities again. An issuer of a financial instrument, that is our car company, we have issued a piece of paper. It says on top, some liability. And against that, we have gone to people and we borrowed 100 crore worth of money or $100 million worth of money from the different parties. It could be institutional investors or it could be common public, common man. Whoever are the investors in my company. I need to, we need to classify that piece of paper as either a financial liability or as an equity instrument because the accounting treatment in my books of account are going to be different for these two. So based on the definitions that we saw in the last two slides, number one, and going by substance over form. Another important characteristic of IFRS standards is the focus on the substance. I may have named in big bold letters on that piece of paper, I may have called it as a financial liability, but sir, the characteristics, the essence, the real features of that instrument might be equity. Whatever I may have named it, I don't care. The form is a financial liability, but the real substance could be equity. In my books of account, I need to record that as an equity means your regular ordinary share capital and all. Equity means ordinary share capital and, and, and my capital. On the other hand, I may have named it as an equity instrument, but from my books of account perspective, I will have to, I may have to treat it as a liability if it has characteristics of a liability. To tell you in simple terms, in a shortcut, I will call a particular liability instrument as a financial liability and not an equity to take one important substance over form characteristic if it if there is a if it is mandatory to repay. What will be mandatory to, to repay? Equity will not be mandatory to repay as, as all of you know. Neither dividend nor the ordinary share capital. I don't have to repay. There is no obligation. So if there is a mandatory requirement on the part of my company to repay, considering all other factors also you take into account. But one point that is very important is because the repayment element is there, I will categorize that piece of paper, that instrument, that document as a liability as a financial liability and I will apply the financial liability concept that we are going to see in IAS 32 IFRS 7 IFRS 9 see accounting treatment again interest uh, dividend the gains uh, losses will depend on the instrument now uh, it answers another question which uh, students normally have so why on earth should we classify that instrument either as this or as that uh, or as that what will happen if we jumble it up friends you'll have a lot of problem the interest that you pay 
or the dividend that you pay, whatever name you give, names are not important in our IFRS standards, subject, substance over form. Whatever name I, I, may, I may have given the name as interest. Interest I'm paying sir, every year 10, 10 crores. Okay. What is the nature of that instrument? The instrument is actually equity, sir. Then, sir, whatever interest you're paying is not interest. It is actually dividend. The difference between the two, you know very well. Interest, if it is... I will put it as a finance cost in my statement of profit or loss after profit from operations. I will show this amount as finance cost and then I will arrive at the profit before tax. But on the other hand, if it were really a dividend, it will not have any place in the statement of profit or loss. Equity dividend will go and sit where? In statement of changes in equity only. I will show in retained earnings bucket. You all are aware. Okay, so 101 places, it will have an impact. We have to derive it by applying IFRS 15. Contract may not, will not talk about it. Similarly here, okay. Preferences shares more often than not have the characteristics of a financial liability rather than equity. So dividend in respect of preference shares are norm normally categorized as a interest cost as a finance expense. And I will show it as a line item in the statement of profit or loss and not as a apportionment in the statement of change. So equity, be careful, friends. Whereas dividend paid on Equity shares, ordinary shares will go and sit in the statement of genius in equity and it will have no place in the statement of profit or loss. These all have a very important impact on the profitability of my company, my PAT, my profit after tax. If anybody looks at, they need to get the right number. All these numbers that we are discussing on my screen will have a very important say on the PAT profit after tax number. Presentation and disclosures are very important in financial statements, not just getting the number right. Number we got it right now, sir. Whether it is interest or dividend, that 10 crore we recorded, no friend, no. Financial statements can get misstated, materially misstated, even if there is a problem with classification and presentation. I have told it last time also. You would have studied that in other papers also, like what it also, you would have seen that concept. Even if class classification or presentation or disclosures are manipulated, still we say financial statements are misstated.